to Bani Israel at all, they, sorry, I, didn't, I meant um, Nubia, um, even they, um, when they accepted Moses' message, they were accepted. Right? So he wasn't a Nabi to a specific group of people. He was a Nabi, nabi for all people, a prophet for all people. But he had a specific um, Rasad, a mission, a message for Pharaoh. Right, he gave this one the message as a rasul to Pharaoh, and when Pharaoh rejected it, he was he was destroyed. He was he was um, drowned in the in the Nile. Okay, so there's a difference between these two. Here he's mentioned as a rasul in particular to Bani Israel. He was a nabi for all people, so all human beings were responsible for becoming Jewish according to Isa you know, teachings. Christian, you might say, but a follower of Christ. Right? At that time, all the way up to our Prophet's time, everyone on earth was responsible for becoming a follower of Christ. Okay, not just the Bani Israel. There are two verses here that I wanted to share um, that, that talk about um, Maryam a.s. Um, chastity. This one is in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 91. And mention her who guarded her chastity, whereat we breathed into her the spirit of life and made her and her son a sign for all people. Alright, this is one verse. This next, next verse is also very similar. This is in chapter 66, verse 12. And God has also made an example for the faithful out of Mary, daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, whereat we breathed into her womb the spirit of life. So one thing here, um, Ruh that's mentioned. I, he mentions Ruhana, or Ruh min Ruhina. It's not as though God has a, a spirit. Like God does not have a spirit the way we have a spirit that's the essence of our life. And God doesn't have a spirit like that. He's, he's, not, he's not limited by these sorts of, um, these sorts of things. When he says, Ruhuna, Ruhina, he, he, he says, my spirit, he's talking about the spirit of life, which is godly. Right? He's not saying that I have a spirit, and I'm going to give my spirit to this child, and so Jesus somehow becomes part of God, or one with God. So you can see how this, maybe this was one of the, re one of the things that um, kind of... Christian, like Paul, Paul, Paul type Christians um, used to, to show the divinity of, the divinity of Christ. If you misunderstand this sort of a statement, you can easily start to think that, oh, Jesus is part of the Spirit of God. God has a Spirit, and He put some of that Spirit, or all of that Spirit, into Maryam's womb, and now God is going to be born from, from Mary. Right? You can see how, how that could lead to confusion if you misunderstand this. Right? So that's not what the verse is saying at all. Ruhuna. My, our spirit doesn't mean the spirit that I, like my spirit I'm going to give to him. It's rather a spirit which I possess, which is godly, right? That's what I give to, to, to this, this womb, right? That's the spirit of life. Now, there's a question yesterday that I wanted, wanted to address with these. Um, you shouldn't think that, um, that, that the encounter between, the, uh, between Gabriel and Maryam is some sort of a polite way of talking about um, Gabriel actually coming and impregnating Maryam. Right? It was, the way um, Isa a.s. was born without any sort of physical contact or any sort of you know, physical um, intercourse, these sorts of things. It was a, a miraculous birth. And the Qur'an is not trying to indicate that you know, by this beautiful um, man coming to Maryam's quarters that somehow he was the one who was responsible for, for um, giving her the child. In that right? When he says, we blew our spirit into, him, into her, it's not, a, it's not all that different from how Allah blows His Spirit into all of us. Right? It's not something specifically for Isa, it's something that, he was, that the Spirit was blown into him, life was given to him. Life is given to every single creature. When, when a, a, a child is born, when the fetus grows, at a certain stage in the development, the, um, the soul is given to that, 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 that fetus. And the Qur'an mentions this in a, in a couple of verses. In Surah um, As-Sajda, chapter 32, verse 7 to 9, 7 to 9, it says, الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه وبدأ من طين ثم جعل نسه من سلالة من ماء مهين ثم سواه ونفخ فيه من روحي He's talking about Allah who, who makes, everything that He creates, He makes it perfect, He makes it in the best possible way. 
he created, he, he began the creation of, of human beings, of man, from earth, from clay. Then he, that was Adam alayhi salam, and then he made the, um, the progeny of Adam come one after another through, through um, a sperm and so forth. And then in, this, in the fetal development, he, he kind of develops the fetus until it is well proportioned, and then he blows the spirit of life into it. Right? So this is for every single human being, the blowing of the spirit of, of life into, into human beings. That, all of us have that. Every single fetus that, that, that becomes a, a, a human being um, has this spirit. And so it's not something specific to Isa that we should then interpret it as you know, some sort of a, um, a secret encounter between the angel and Maryam, that they had some sort of an affair. Recite the salawat, please. I was hoping to get a little bit further with the story, but I'm going to, I'm going to stop there and inshallah we'll continue the story tomorrow. I want to... Um, I want to share a couple of passages from the Bible that also narrate these same stories and just to see the difference between the way the Qur'an talks about this, this story and the way the Bible does. This is, um, I'm going to read from, from Matthew and from Luke because both of these, um, these Gospels, they, they mention the story of the birth of Isa al Mark doesn't have any mention of this. So in Matthew, this is Matthew 1, um, verse 18 through 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, had, uh, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets. The vir- this is a quote from the Old Testament. The virgin will be the child. Sorry, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Right, so here it mentions it mentions this, this um, husband of Mary, Joseph, and it, before this it mentions his lineage coming from David, um, Dawud al um, So we have no no mention of any anyone like this that, or any indication that she was married at the time or ever was married afterwards. Right, so this is this is something that, that we have no evidence for from Islamic sources. Um, we definitely know that she. she she was never married before, um, because she is definitely a virgin at the time of the conception of Isa al Afterwards, also, we don't have any evidence for this. From Luke, in Luke 2, right in the beginning, it, it talks about this. Um, it says that um, Caesar Augustus, the, the Roman, um, I guess, the emperor, he was, he was conducting a census at the time. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the, t- the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. So the hotel was was filled, so they went to a uh, a barn, and um, and the the baby was born there, according to this, this story. So we'll see that the Quranic story is, is very different than this. She, there is no Joseph. Um, they aren't in a in civilization when she gives birth. But rather, she goes off by herself with no company at all into the, into the desert and she gives birth. And so there's a lot of discrepancy between the stories um, in the, the New Testament and in the Quran. Recite the Salah, please. No. 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 A few minutes for questions.